Alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasul Allah. Welcome to our class on how to perform the prayer. How to perform the prayer. Yesterday, I answered the question that many of my young brothers came with about the prayer, the problems that they were running into when they go to the masjid. Okay, let me switch over here to my YouTuber so I can see uh, the brothers there. Let me ask this question. <clears throat> you go to the masjid. The imam has already led the people in prayer. You come late after the prayer. Do you have to call the adhan over again and the ikamit over again? Or can you just go ahead and pray? What is the answer? What do you brothers think? And this is for the brothers to answer because they are the ones that go to the mosque and this is the, the debate that's going on in a lot of these masjids. Okay, what's the correct way? Can anyone answer that? I got any brothers in the Zoom? Brothers in the Zoom? Brother Marard and, and the rest of the brothers in the Zoom, get on that mic. I don't want no sisters answering because sisters need to be at home taking care of their kids so their kids don't be on the internet hacking Layla. Okay? Brothers, you go to the masjid. The prayer has already been performed. You're late. What do you do? Do you call the adhan over again and the ikamat and start praying or what? Let's hear the answer. Go ahead. I mean, you can just go ahead and start praying. You don't got to call the adhan or the ikamat. One of the companions, they said um, the the adhan and the ikamat that was like called at the master, that's sufficient for you. Okay. So I think it was the grandson of the prophet. Sorry. Exactly. There you go. That's the correct answer that Brother Marard has now. So I'm telling you, young brothers, you know, don't argue, don't disrespect the elderly. If the imam or the other brothers come to you and yell at you, telling you a stock for law, you're going to hell because you didn't call the ikamid, you didn't call the adhan, you just sit there and listen to what they say and walk away because you don't have to. Now, El Hassan, and who was El Hassan? He was Ali's son, the grandson of the prophet. He said that he preferred to call the ikamit, but not the adhan. He said, but if you do decide to call the adhan, call it in a low voice. Don't make it loud because you don't want to confuse the people as to the time of the prayers. But that's the correct answer. You brothers do not have to recall the Adhan nor the Ikamid if you come right after the man and led the people in prayer. We went over those hadiths yesterday. But don't disrespect the, the elderly people. Okay? Because we tired of being disrespected. <laughs> Instead, you know, listen to them and say thank you and just walk away. Okay? All right, so that was one of the questions that we asked that was asked that we went over yesterday. And also another thing, where is this hadith? The hadith, whereas there is no adhan or ikamit for a woman. One of the sisters, she challenged me on that. She said, so Zalayla, you're teaching that there's no adhan. It ain't in Bukhari. It ain't in Muslim. It sure ain't. Where's the hadith on that located at, guys? Nobody can remember that hadith uh, collection? Is it uh, uh, Baki? Yes, Bahaki. Yes. And that hadith is authentic. There is no scholar of the hadith that will tell you it's not. Not everything is in Bukhari and Muslim. 85% of the knowledge of Islam is in Bukhari. And most of the hadiths are give you do go straight from there or Muslim. But every now and then there, uh, Imam Bukhari didn't add something. Okay. And this is one. The hadith where there is no adhan or a comment for a woman is found in Bahaiki. Okay. It's authentic. It's Sahih. Okay. But that does that mean that a woman can't call the adhan? Does that mean that a woman cannot call the ikamid if she's at home? Yeah. 
sisters, explain it. Uh, that besides Ifty, get them other young girls on that mic. Does that mean that uh, that she can't call the Avdan or the e comment if she wants to? What do you sisters think? You just should know this stuff. If she's at home and she wants to call the Avdan or the e comment, she can because Aisha used to lead the women in her household and she used to call the Avdan and the e comment. Exactly. Yeah, so you can if you want to. If the Aisha used to lead her servants, she had uh, servants. She would lead them in prayer, her female servants. And sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, she would call the Adana or the common. Okay, so you can. When I had uh, Amina Fresno and uh, the twins and, uh, and, and, and came to visit me and Latifa, you know, we prayed together. We called the comet. I forgot who called. I think Latifa called the e comment and I led the prayer. Okay, so we don't have to. Now, what about this Adhan? Do I have to call the Adhan at home before I pray? Who can explain this Adhan at home thing? What did we learn about calling the Adhan at home? Do I have to call the Adhan? No, you don't have to. The masjid in your area, when they call the Adhan, that's for the area, your, your area. So you don't have to call it if you don't want to. Exactly. You don't have to call the Adhan at home if there's a masjid in your community. Because the local masjid, he, they're calling the Adhan for every Muslim in the city. But if you want to, you can, you know, to, for practice. You can do that to teach your kids. But the, uh, the masjid is calling the Adhan. For example, when I go to pray, I don't call no Adhan. I do recite the Ikam, even though I don't have to as a woman. But I always recite the Ikam real low so no one can hear me. And I'll pray low. I don't raise my voice. Why is it that a woman should pray when she, uh, without raising her voice and all that attention? Why is it? Who can explain she that? She doesn't want to give attention to herself. If she's home alone and um, by her making the adhan or calling the akama loud, someone can be on the outside of her door listening and can stalk her later. So you don't want to do that. Exactly. It's for our protection, guys. It's not because women are less than men or women are dogs and donkeys and, and giraffes. No, it's our protection. Allah looking out for us because he knows that shaitan runs through a man like blood runs through his vein. It's the men who are weak, not us. It's them who are weak. We're just emotional. They're the ones that can't control their desires. Okay. So we keep our don down. You know, we keep our voice low because you don't want to bring attention to these men who busy trying to, to they can't handle themselves. Lord have mercy. <laughs> these men that cannot Stand to be around women. I don't understand that. Lord have mercy, especially a woman in a hijab and a jill bath. But they look at Beyonce and these naked Cardi B's every day. But put a hijab on and a jill bath on and be attractive looking. You ain't showing nothing but your face and hands. And now all of a sudden, oh God, they can't handle it. It's the men. So keep your voice down, sisters. It's a protection for you. It's a shame, okay? <laughs> I have to, you know, be dramatic, but I'm trying to make a point to the young girls here. You know, the school is out for the summer. We have a lot of children in our, y'all see how, feel, how full my um, Zoom room is? Most of those people in Zoom are the children. They're the teenage kids. Their parents got them here learning the dean. So I'm trying, I'm going to be dramatic because we living in some terrible times. These kids need to know to cover their behinds. You little girls, y'all better put them hijabs on. Stop. It ain't about wearing no shorts, no tight pants with a little top. You better put a, a bio on like me. I got an abaya on. And I got a key mar, my, draw my veil over my bosom. And I got brothers on this internet that can't handle looking at me. And I'm covered. What you, do you guys think those men are doing when they see you in shorts and a tank top? Or you got on a pair of skinny jeans 
with a little top, your breasts are showing and a little rag on your hair, half your hair hanging out. You little girls better cover it up. Any girl over the age of nine should be wearing hijab and jilbab like me. I ain't talking, pants are not haram. Y'all know that. If you're gonna wear pants, wear hair and pants and you ain't walking around no hair and pants. So I suggest you put a abaya on. A bias make you look elegant. A bias make you look like a lady and put on a pair of pants underneath in case you got a roundhouse kick somebody and you better be have, a, be, have some self-defense skills. That's another thing too. The girls should be in, in, go in Taekwondo for the summer. You come here and learn these classes every day and I want y'all taking Taekwondo classes so you can learn how to roundhouse kick. You wear your abaya, your kimar, somebody touch you or come up on you, you roundhouse kick them. And keep it moving. Hello. So it ain't about no shorts. It ain't about no tank top. It ain't about no Cardi B hair weaves. And all that crap that you Muslim girls are wearing. Y'all better cover it up. Because if a man can't handle looking at me and I'm dressed the way Allah say, what y'all think is going through their mind when they looking at you looking like Cardi B? Y'all got that, little girls? Hello. All right. So these are some of the things that we talked about yesterday concerning uh, the um, Adhan and 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 Ikamet. Now let me see if I can do this. Okay. Yeah, I see you guys. Oh, I'm waiting. I'm going up and down with these screens. Now I'm getting ready to try this PowerPoint. There's no lag, uh, Ifty, on YouTube. No, it's good. I'm okay, good. girl, because y'all should see me. I'm about a nervous wreck. I'm sitting here. These kids, I have had no sleep. I went to sleep and almost missed Shake Atley's class. I know y'all see that sooner followers thing, right? I'm trying to work this. Give me a minute. I don't know what I'm doing. Hold on, guys. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I need some help in here. Give me a second. Picture. Uh. Okay, where's that program at? Let me go, where am I at? I'm back on here. Okay, I see this. Now let me go back to, stop that, go back. It's asking me about the screen. Oh, I just can't do this. Y'all don't know how stressful this is. I'm such a stress, I'm stressed out. Okay, I see Ifty. Okay, hold on guys. Hold on. Can y'all see this? No, 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 no. Hold on. Go back to the program. Cut that off. To put the PowerPoint, I'm going to have to go to this. Hold on. Uh, oh, here it is. I got it. I found it. I got it, guys. Here we go. See, Layla teaching herself. Can y'all see it now? Oh, yeah, I got a screen share from uh, YouTube. I mean, uh, whatever this is. Zoom. Ready? Go. Y'all see it? Please yes. tell me I did it. Yes, we'll see we can see it. Through. Everybody on YouTube and Facebook too can see it. Let's pray that these kids don't go away after they see that I done blocked them and I can use my regular programs for the next class. Cause this, there is, it goes. this is just too much for me, y'all. I'm stressed out. My anxiety is done. Okay. More rules. Regarding the Adana and the comment, and just you know, bear with me. We went over this. We talked about how whoever makes the Adan can also make the e comment. I'm just gonna have to go through it because I don't want to mess the screen up. For those who missed the prayer, we talked about that. We also get the dialil for there. There's no Adan or e comment for the women. Entering the mosque, what to do when the Adhan is finished. We talked about that. You guys answered the question. Good job, Brother Marard. Now, today, I want to go into detail speaking about some of the innovations that people do in regards to uh, the e-com. And I cannot see that right there, what I got at the top. Oh, here, I can see it on y'all's screen. One of the innovations... And by the way, I took this from Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli's book. 
This stuff I took from his book on common innovations and in the prayer. That's a good book that Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli has that you can get from Atli online. I taught that class. So I took a lot of this from his book. Um, the economic of one who is not the designated caller. If someone other than the appointed caller wants to make the adhan, you have to ask the caller's permission. If a person is a regular adhan caller, you know, and you want to do uh, the uh, uh, the um, and ask his permission. If the appointed or regular caller is late and you're afraid that y'all will end up making the adhan too late, then another person uh, can make the call, okay? And so now what are some of the innovations? We have to remember that calling the adhan is an act of worship. And as we've been teaching you in our class on the weekends entitled The Lawful and the Unlawful, when it comes to actions of worship, everything is haram unless a law said otherwise unless you can show where the prophet or the companions did it. So the Adhan is a form of worship. We are not allowed to add anything to it or take anything away from it. We have the Hadith where the prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever introduces something into this religion of ours will have it rejected. And again, I'm going to go over some of these innovations. And again, you'll find many of these in the book of Sheikh Muhammad Said Atli entitled Common Innovations. This is one of the big ones. The person calling the Adhan will say, I bear witness that our leader Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. We should not put the word leader in it. Because remember, the prophet taught us how to call the Adhan. That hadith of, of Ibn Mundir. The prophet didn't teach him to say our leader. So you should not put that our leader Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in your Adhan. This is innovation. We have a hadith where Abu Bakr, a hadith from Abu Bakr, when he heard a person called the Adhan and say, I bear witness that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. He would say the same, kiss the inside of his index finger and wipe his eyes. How many of you have heard this? This is another innovation. People will tell you that Abu Bakr used to kiss the inside of his index finger and wipe his eyes when the caller said, I bear witness that Muhammad is messenger of Allah. And then they say that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever does that intercession will be permissible. This is a lie. This is a Sufi fabrication. This is not true. Okay, this is not an authentic hadith. And this is what I was telling you, brothers, be careful when you're dealing with the Sufis. The Sufis have a lot of hadiths that they use, mostly from Mishkat. Mishkat was the first collection of hadiths that I memorized. I think I memorized the whole entire collection by the time I was, I'd say, 10 years old because my stepfather had the whole collection. I used to read it. My mother would make me read it when I get home from work, school, doing my schoolwork. I'd go to sleep reading about it at the moonlight. I memorized all those hadiths. By the time I was 10, I would think. And then, you know, I would never forget, that's when Imam Tawfiq, none of you know him. Uh, Imam Tawfiq was a, a good scholar here in America with Sheikh Atli. And, um, Imam Tawfiq, uh, may Allah bless him and forgive him of his sins. Uh, he said uh, that, that the Mishkat hadiths are not authentic. A lot of those hadiths are not authentic. Not all of them. There's a few that are. But the Sufis use that Mishkat. They use that Mishkat. And this is a Mishkat hadith. It's not authentic, guys. 
Abu Bakr wasn't going around kissing the inside of his fingers, wiping his eyes. This is an innovation. So if you see people doing that and telling you to do that, this is not correct. Okay. Also, there's another hadith that says, whoever hears the caller say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, all that. Welcome, oh my love, and the coolness of my eyes, and put your index fingers and wipe your eye. You will never go blind. None of this stuff is correct. You will find all this crap in um, Mishkat. Okay? Those hadiths are not authentic. There is nothing that traces back to the companions or, or the prophets saying that. So be careful of innovations like that, kissing the fingers and putting it in your eye and all that silly stuff. If it seems silly, then that's how you know it ain't true. Also, more innovations. This is what the Muslims are doing today, singing the Adhan. Yo, you guys remember about three weeks ago, uh, Sheikh um, Abu Usama at Tahabi. Sheikh Abu Usama at Tahabi, he gave a lecture about a TikToker, a brother in California, young brother, who was calling the Abdan, you know, in, in a way, but was singing it. And remember, the way Abu Usama at Tahabi handled that was so wonderful. He was so kind and, and his nasiha. He was so sweet in how he corrected that brother and said, you know, mashallah, you know, and on one hand for one thing, but this is not the way we do it. To sing the adhan or to say it in an improper Arabic way by adding letters to it or lengthening it. That's what you do when you're singing, even singing the Quran like a lot of y'all do. You over elongating. This is this is innovation. You're changing the meaning of the words and everything else. When you over elongate Arabic, you're changing the meaning. We have a hadith where Ibn Umar told a man, I am angry at you. And he said, the reason why is because he's you sing when you call the Adhan and you ask people to pay you for it. So the Adhan should be pronounced, not sang. And unfortunately, Muslims are singing the Quran just as they're singing the Quran today, uh, singing the Quran just as they're singing the Adhan today. This is one of the signs of the last hour. It's an innovation. Also, making supplications and practices of a similar nature before the morning Adhan are innovations too. And this is what a lot of the Sufis do. How many of you have a husband? You can tell if your husband's a Sufi. Your husband wakes up before Fajr and he sits there remembering Allah with his dicker beads and making supplications before the sun rises and all that, that stuff, the, before the, the morning Adhan. This is innovation, okay? This is not from what the prophet used to do. Remember, all actions of worship are haram unless you can prove that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it or that even his companions, they didn't do this. They didn't wake up uh, in the early morning and sit there with their dicker bees supplicating and all of that. That's innovation. Also, how many of you have heard people do this? After the Adhan is called, they yell out peace and blessings upon the prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Somebody talking in here? Somebody got a question or something? Moderators, y'all watching that screen? That ain't one of them kids, is it? No. Okay. Okay, to say peace and blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after the Adhan has been called. This is also innovation. This is a hated innovation. Okay, and a lot of people do that after the Adhan has been La ilaha illallah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is innovation. We don't do that. So singing the Adhan. 
waking up before the Adan for Fajr uh, with your vicar bees uh, supplicating and stuff. This is innovation. After the Adan has been pronounced, you're going to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Innovation. Okay. Any questions about any of those things? I don't want to go further because I don't want to confuse people. This is enough for today. <laughs>